I mean, so much of what we did at Duke, I was a political science and women's studies major, was to write. And I think that uh, I've been a professor of law where I taught um, I taught legal writing, and that is one of the hardest things to teach. And I really feel like I got such a great um, education and so many opportunities to write. I mean, how, seriously, how many 10 page papers did we all write together? And we could like bang those puppies out and write our thesis. We had to have supporting information and we had to write. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, no, I, I, I think that the, the work that I did on becoming a good writer, it is still something that I tell all uh, students when they go through. The time they take to spend being a good writer is time well spent. One of the things that um, I walked into a congressperson's office, and this was, I was young, and we were talking about making sure the Title IX stayed strong. And, and he said, he gave me really good advice. He said, Nancy, there's no such thing as an issue that is done that you can say like, oh, voting rights, we've got those down and now we can move on to something else, right? Or choice or that there is no issue that is ever you know, flat, right? So I wanted to give this, so I wanted to, um, give people the sense of the ups and downs and the struggle that something that you would think of as being pretty non-controversial, like giving women equal opportunities in sports, yeah. um, that, that they would um, have a sense of, of um, you know, like I learned all this at Duke, but actually doing it made such a, a a difference in my life. Like, so watching, so legislation gets passed again, I was 10 years old when it got passed. And then the, after legislation gets passed, then it, then um, the department of education, they write regulations that interpret what that statute means. And then there's case law, right? Those of us who are lawyers, right? We argue and we use the regulations and we use the statute and former case law to be able to make our points, but how that those kind of the three branches of government work together or not makes all the difference in the world in what the numbers that you'll see in actually women participating in sports. So while you'd like to think that like the numbers have been sort of the smooth uh, path, it has not. Um, and one of the things that had me get into the issue of Title IX in sports is um, in 1984, when I was at the Olympics, Donna Deverona came and talked to the Olympic team. And she said, you're about to become famous. What are you going to do with it? And I had never really thought about that before. But she she said, I hope it has something to do with Title IX. Because um, there was a bad United States Supreme Court decision. Those of you who are lawyers, you know, like, ah, when this happens. So, uh, you know, Title IX is just a statute. It's not based on uh, constitutional law. So we had to go back to Congress and get Title IX passed again. So Title IX has actually been passed twice, once in 1972, again in 1988. Mm -hmm. So um, every time I got a microphone in front of my face, it was an opportunity to make Gino Barr proud of me and be able to uh, uh, talk about uh, Title IX things that I had learned when I was in school. Well, I think that when you write, that it helps you to learn something in a way that you otherwise couldn't. Um, mm -hmm. I have a little bit of ADD, and when I really get so into writing, that it becomes a little bit like you know when when I swam. There's there are these moments where you have this sense of giftedness and sense of you know, you're kind of tapping into something divine, literally. And it's the same kind of thing, like you're like yourself kind of poof goes away and who you are, right? You're writing something. And sometimes I honestly, I go back to something that I've written, you know, even a week ago and I'm like, well, that is amazing. Who did that? Yeah. <laughs>